Alright, Total War Pharaoh had just managed to show off its very first footage before the criticism started rolling in, and a bunch of people of it from people who, just like me, has yet to play the game. A bunch of the more high-profile YouTubers received preview codes, must be nice, while some could only stand by and watch, again, including yours truly. And with that little disclaimer out of the way, I wanted to address some of the criticism I've seen coming from my fellow YouTubers, because I find some of it to be either downright strange or just completely bonkers. Naturally, we're all entitled to our opinions, but as a historical Total War fan first, and as a person who won't take my grievances up front, there's a few things I wanted to comment on. And of course, no hate, just love to my fellow content creators here. First of all, I wanted to comment on Pixelated Apollo, who made a reaction video to a gameplay video made by Jackie Fish. Like me, Apollo has not played Pharaoh yet, so we're kind of on even ground here. And as much as I respect the guy, I don't really share his cynicism right now. First of all, a major point of Apollo's is that rather than making completely new features, Pharaoh is instead bringing back features from older games. Oh, no heroes! No heroes! I mean, yeah, okay, that's good. Yay. Like, here we go. It's another thing that we just got back. But is that supposed to be like some... I guess that's good. You know, yeah, that's true. It's good. There's no heroes and it's, you know, because heroes destroyed the historical vibe. And even though he does admit that this is a good or perhaps at best a neutral thing, he's more likely to be dismissive of them, more keen on complaining that we're getting things back rather than completely new stuff. And even though he does allude to wanting to withhold judgment until he's played it, he ends the video on a contradictory note, saying essentially it'll be garbage. But yeah, this is just another boring soulless game. No surprise from CA. And listen, I completely agree that getting features back is not the same as getting completely new features. I agree that people being hit by chariots should not look like this. And I also agree that at least one of the battlefields shown here look extremely tiny, and that every Total War should do something major in the right direction to shake up and improve upon the battles. After all, the battles are what Total War does different from any other game out there. But what I really take issue with is his constant complaining that we're getting features back from earlier titles. You're gonna have formations! I mean, the, the, didn't we have formations, like, in Rome, Medieval 2? For as long as I can remember, historical Total War fans, including myself, have been fighting to reclaim old features, specifically because we love what we had. The fact that Pharaoh is bringing back things like actual general bodyguards units, siege equipment you can actually build before battle, walls that actually matter, and importantly, unit stances, which essentially are the old formations where units can perform shield walls, use fire arrows, or other specific actions, is nothing but music to my ears. And after personally missing all of these features in Troy, which was supposed to be more of a historical title, I'm glad that we're finally getting them in Pharaoh, seemingly better than ever if we are to believe the new stances of defending and pushing. Sure, it's legitimate to want new features as well. I certainly would have loved seeing Total War be miles ahead of where we are today. But the fact that we're at least finally taking a major step in the right direction is good. But even on his point with a few new features, he might have just meant features he didn't personally like. Because based on what we've seen and heard, which is what both Apollo and myself can base our opinions on, I don't think I've heard of a Total War that seeks to shake up its battles as much as Pharaoh. The shifting weather mechanic seems to me like a great idea in concept even though I, of course, can't attest to its quality at this moment. But Apollo seemed to brush it off as an arcade feature, because if the battle lasts about 5-7 to seven minutes on average, presumably, these weather condition changes must be super short. Do it, Look guess. how stupid this burst, looks. Stop, stop. Uh, yeah, if it's like a sandstorm that comes in for like 30 seconds, because like, it, it can't be long. It, if, you, if you do it like in Napoleon, it could work because those battles could last up to 30 minutes so you could have like it'd be interesting to have like a 10 minute storm come in and then leave which creates a dynamic on the battlefield but on this is it gonna make sense where like sandstorm like it's got to come in so fast you know what i mean i don't know if i agree that this will be the case and i don't think ca would make a system where a sandstorm comes in and lasts only 30 seconds before packing up and leaving it absolutely remains to be seen how these systems end up though but i'm of the mind of innocent until proven guilty here Further, the fact that fire is now an actual dangerous thing is fantastic, and even though it's definitely based off of older systems, it's absolutely new. Fire can now spread through foliage, meaning that as shown in the gameplay footage from Lionheart, that siege towers, even when stationed on the walls, can still burn and crumble if fire spreads on the ground. This seems to make archers and their fire arrows that much more dangerous and tactically important. 
and in combination with the reintroduction of the better siege equipment system, means that it's vital to keep them from catching fire. It's also mentioned that Total Wars, in particular games like Rome and Medieval 2, used to appear drastically different from each other, meaning that the games felt a lot more unique than, say, Troy compared to Pharaoh. If you compare Rome Total War, Medieval 2 Total War, Empire Total War, they all feel drastically different. Now, of course, Rome Total War, Medieval 2, there's a lot of similarities, but in terms of the UI, the HUD, uh, the mechanics are are different, but yet similar, but it still was enough to like, wow, this is a different game. This is a standalone different game. But I'd argue that this is completely wrong. If you pay attention, most things in Rome and Medieval 2 work exactly the same, especially in terms of the UI. We have the bar on the lower edge of the screen being mostly the same, and the cities are portrayed in much the same way. Truly, the main reason why Rome and Medieval 2 can feel so different from each other is mainly up to graphics in my opinion, as this was an age when visuals changed so much from year to year. And while it is true that Pharaoh is very reminiscent of Troy, I think there are other factors that contribute to this more than just the UI, such as similar time periods and the fact that it's made from the same team, a team known for having made Troy. In the end, I do agree with Apollo that we should get more innovation, we should get more details and bigger differences between games. But I also think it's being too harsh on Pharaoh in particular, when this to me seems like a game that, on its own, is the first Total War game in about 8 years that actually takes a few steps in the right direction. Of course, make sure to check out Unlike Apollo's full video as well. Thank you guys, bye, have fun, love you. Moving on to Zerkovic, and I want to address the topic of unit diversity or unit variety, because I don't think we're on the same page here. Zerkovic felt that after playing a few battles of Pharaoh, that his armies and units seemed way too similar to those of his enemies. He just couldn't tell apart his shirtless units from his foes, and would much rather have entire armies made up of distinct cultural units that sport a certain vibe and look. Look at my shirtless men in headwear as they take on other shirtless men in headwear. And oh shiza, we've been flanked by shirtless men in headwear. So a lack of a distinct flavor for the factions really kills a Total War game for me. That's what I found with both Troy and Three Kingdoms. But they do have it there. Look at this. Look at these guys. They look freaking cool. Black and gold kind of color scheme. If there was an entire army that had this color scheme, that would feel really unique and distinct from a faction of, say, these boys. Look at these golden stormcast looking boys here. If an entire faction had this kind of bright golden vibe, that would be a very unique feel. Maybe it's not historically totally accurate, but it would certainly set the factions much more apart from each other. But I feel like this becomes completely wrong. And listen, I love my heavily armored and golden units as much as the next guy, but for a historical game, it wouldn't be right. I don't remember hearing people complaining when French feudal knights fought English or Holy Roman feudal knights back in medieval, even though they all looked 100% the same when adjusted for color schemes. And perhaps the color schemes was the only thing Zerkovich was getting at, but I don't think that was everything. The thing about historical games, what's so important about them, is that they adhere to historical rules as closely as possible. That's kind of the deal with them. And as much as I believe Zerkovich agrees, I also believe he's played Warhammer games for the past 7 years and been heavily influenced by how dissimilar the factions there are. And that's of course a cool part of Warhammer, that the colorful childlike fantasy universe of dwarves and orc boys look different from each other. But in a title taking place during the Bronze Age, in a very specific region of the world, it's just not a weird thing that units look relatively similar. Perhaps the colors could be a tad more distinct. I'd probably have to play the game first to tell fully myself. Something Zerkovich has done, of course, and so he has the upper hand here. But still, at the moment it doesn't seem like the biggest negative to me. On that note, I do agree that more could be done to differentiate one faction's units from each other, without making it ahistorical. For example, as he rightly mentions, the UI doesn't really play along here. You can probably see the similarities. It's the green of our army's icons. It's the red of the enemy's army's icons. And it's all just random shapes. Diamond shapes, hexagons, circles. Doesn't really give any kind of faction identity or any kind of diverse feel between the factions. And I think that was Troy's problem as well and is some other Total War games problems. And I think that stems from Warhammer spoiling us and giving us all the massive diversity between the factions. And that's even starting at the banners that are over the unit's heads. In both Troy and Pharaoh, intuitive faction banners are replaced by generic icons, and I agree that this new way of doing things is objectively bad. In fact, CA have themselves done so much better not too long ago. 3K had units actually physically carrying the banners of their factions, and it looked freaking awesome. The same goes for Shogun 2 of course, or even in Empire and Napoleon, where flags are carried. I think CA really needs to go back to a UI style that is intuitive and user-friendly rather than generic and bloated. Because with this system, 
If you choose to turn off these icons, the units on the ground are actually not carrying any signifiers to suggest which faction they belong to, like flags or standards of any kind. Zerkovich comments that Warhammer spoiled us with faction banners, but I'd argue that historical titles used to do it even better way back when. And of course, make sure to check out Zerkovich's full video as well. I will see you in the future. And finally, Mr. Smart Donkey LP complains that not enough of the city wall is being used and besieged in sieges, which is a shame when there's so much wall, but the enemy is focused on just one or a few parts of it. As possible fixes, he suggests that cities should be made even smaller, or indeed work like they do in Warhammer, which is one side of the wall being approachable. Either the map should be smaller and it should be more condensed and things happen all over the place, or you should have the thing like in Warhammer, where it's only one part of the wall that's besieged and the rest is just covered with, you know, invisible or terrain that you can't get to. It it doesn't, you know, it's not great, but at least it makes it more realistic. This just feels so shit when you have all these stretches of walls where absolutely nothing is happening. It just doesn't feel right. These, these sieges are supposed to be massive when you go historically. And even though I can understand the reasoning, this does ring off a few alarm bells in my mind, because that's absolutely not how I see it. If there is one thing I love about historical Total War Siege battles, it's the freedom, it's the large cities, and the possibility, not the guarantee, but the possibility, the option, of attacking it from any side. Warhammer Sieges were such a disappointment to me, because they always ended up feeling cartoony and half-baked, never truly reaching the heights of what the historical games could offer in terms of freedom and choice. I do agree with Smart Donkey that it would be nice if the AI could spread out its forces to use more of the wall. I've obviously yet to test this myself, and that, well, perhaps it would be nice if the Total War engines were better adapted to larger armies, and therefore to utilizing more of the city. But even though we're not fully there yet, I disagree that the solution is to simplify things to the level of Warhammer, which in my opinion would be to validate the sieges in those games. And listen, I do agree with him that I and most Total War players would probably much rather have Medieval 3 coming up, but then again, it's nice to see something fresh as well. So for the time being, I remain cautiously optimistic, and make sure to watch Smart Donkey LP's video as well. Thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed, have a good day, and goodbye. Those were some of my issues with some of the fire criticism from a few of the biggest Total War voices out there. Let me know what you think of these topics, and whether you agree or not. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, remember to leave a like and sub to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.